Hey guys, last lesson we already talked about what the double integral polar coordinates is and we kind of, you know, looked at the concept, look at the limiting process. So today's lesson is really finding out how we can evaluate the double integral in polar coordinates. Similarly to how we evaluated double integrals in rectangular coordinates, we changed the double integral to the iterative integral and then we carry out the proper integration. Today's lesson is going to be about that. And I would really want to draw your attention to the, all the notation, all the terms, because I think it's at best that we really understand what is what it is, okay? So, let's go straight to the theorem. Theorem of evaluating polar double integrals, otherwise known as double integrals in polar coordinates. Now, the process is exactly the same as double integral in rectangular coordinates, but we will soon see some places where things are really not the same. And that's why I think this is one of the more important theorems one should really learn. If R is a simple polar region, and if f of R theta is continuous on R, then the double integral of the function R and theta with respect to elementary area over the region R is going to be equals to first integrate the function R and theta multiplied by R. Okay, that is very important. That's the difference that we need to pay careful attention of. So we take the function multiplied by R, integrate that with respect to R, holding theta fixed as always, Put in the limits R, R1 in terms of theta, R2 in terms of theta, and then we will integrate that entire expression in terms of theta, and then putting alpha and beta inside. Okay, so, and the difference, as you can see, is that we need to introduce a term R inside over there for reasons that will be clear in a while's time. So, um, if we look at that over there, what we say that is that when we got the double integral over region R, region R is a simple polar region, as I've said, is, as one of the conditions. What we have is something like that, okay? So if we uh, um, extend the line segment, okay? Um, R theta is basically, we all know R, R1 theta is always less than R2 theta, right? Which it, it is always the case over here. So, and then alpha and beta is over here like that. So basically this is the region R and these values go over there. Okay, if R is a simple region and F is continuous. So that is essentially what it means. And then we can carry out the proper calculations. Okay, that's all said and fine. But many of us, or at least for me, I really want to know why there is an R term inside there. You know, it doesn't really make sense. Remember how dA would go all the way to dx and dy, but in this case, dA becomes R dr d theta. Okay, and this is what this lesson is all about. Because when I started learning double integrals and polar coordinates, I kept on making the mistake. I always associated dA to dx and dy, or dy and dx, but forgot that R term. And that is a, a mistake a lot of students make, well, at least for me. So, you know, if you're studying your, your course, uh, let's see why this becomes like that. DA becomes that. Okay, the answer would lie in the summation. Let's just look at the summation. Okay, the summation, remember, the using uh, before the limiting process, we take the sum. The function applied to RK um, and theta K multiplied by change in AK. So, essentially, what we want to do is that we want to find an expression for delta AK. Now, what is delta AK? Delta AK is one of the polar subrectangles, right? By subdividing the region R. So what we did is that we sub the, subdivide the region R using the, the circular rays, sorry, the circular um, arcs, okay, and the rays, and this is one of the subrectangles, okay? So let's find an expression of the area of this subrectangle over here. Okay, let's introduce some new terms. Uh, when we define the, the subrectangle, what we can do is that if we can say that the, the rays that you know confine the subrectangle, which is basically these two rays over here, okay, uh, there's an angle, and this is called the central angle. It's the, it's the angle that subtends the two rays. This is basically what we call the central angle. Central angle, like so. All right, and then what is this? Well, this is basically the radial thickness, the radial thickness of the. Um, Delta AK of the sub polar sub rectangle. Um, that is important. Why? Well, because we want to find an expression of this area over here. All right. So how do we go about doing that? Well, remember, remember the point that we pick inside the sub rectangle. We call it an arbitrary point, right? R K star and theta K star is an arbitrary point. So since it's arbitrary, and later when we take the limiting process, you know, we kind of you know find the area of that point itself. We are at liberty to pick a certain point. So what we do is that we pick a point, okay, RK star, that is between the smaller arc and the larger arc, and that's halfway in between the two. So what does this tell us? This tells us that this distance over here is going to be half um, change in RK, correct? And this is also going to be the same, half change in RK. So we pick our RK star to lie, to like kind of bisect the sub rectangle into two equal portions as far as the radar thickness is concerned. And once we do that, geometric argument enables us to define an expression for the area. It does. Well, um, I'm not sure whether you can see it. It's basically the area of this 
segment subtract the area of this smaller segment over here. And we're going to write that in terms of the radar thickness, the central angle, and the uh, RK star. Okay? Uh, basically, if you eat pizza, you always want the biggest size, slice. So it's the bigger slice subtract by the, the smaller slice. Like here. So what's the expression? Well, let's just write it down. So change in AK star. Okay, it's going to be equals to... Now, what's the formula we're going to use? We're going to use half A squared theta. Why? Because we've got the convenience of the, the length of the two rays. Um, this two, we got the length over here. So what for the bigger slice? What is it? Well, it's half. Okay. So what is a? A is going to be R K star plus half change in R K squared, and then we we'll multiply that by the central angle because the central angle is the same for both of the slices. Okay, and this is the expression that we get for the area for the larger slice. But uh, like I said again, we want the area of this small polar sub rectangle, so we will subtract the area of the smaller slice. Okay, it's going to be half, and what is A this time? But it's none other than RK star subtract the, the half change in RK. RK star subtract the small change in RK, and then after that, we square that, and then we multiply again by the central angle. Okay, now that is what we have. Now let's um, erase this, okay, keeping the theorem there, and we will evaluate this expression. So, uh, what can I factor out? I can factor out the, the theta K, can I? Okay, yeah, factor out the theta K and the half, and what I want to do is, um, you know, multiply these two together. Okay, so what's the first one? Well, basically it's going to be R K star squared, okay, plus multiply these two and multiply uh, these two together and, uh, and uh, multiply again by two, so what I'll have is I have plus R K star, uh, ch small change in R K, right? And after that, I want to uh, plus this, which is essentially one quarter um, change in R K, the radar thickness. This is the first one. What's the second one? The second one is basically subtract RK star. Okay, what I have over here, I have uh, multiplied uh, these two together, I will get RK star uh, multiplied by, uh, change in RK, then I multiply by two. So basically the half is gone. But this will be a negative quantity, but I've got a minus sign inside here. So when I bring the minus sign inside, I'll get a plus. Okay, just do the calculations by yourself and you'll see it's essentially the same. Now I will get one quarter again square this quantity over here but I'll introduce the minus sign so it basically becomes minus. Okay so this is what we have the expression. All right so this one cancels out with this. Um, this cancels out with this. Sorry it's a square here. This cancels out with this and we got this added up with this. So we got 2 RK star multiplied by change in RK. Um, 2 and then we divide by 2 we basically you know get RK star multiplied by change in RK and this is going to be equals to R, RK star a uh, small change in RK and a small change in the angle theta the central angle which is basically what we have over here and finally what we can do is that we would put this expression of um, the uh, change in AK into back to the summation RK star uh, change in RK and change in angle theta um, K and then when I take the limit as n tends towards infinity, what do we know? Well, basically all the um, infinite small quantities become the variable itself. So this becomes the double integral over region R. The function is over there, but this time it's R and theta. And then this is where our R comes in. Multiply by R and then um, dr d theta. Just like what we have over here. Okay, and that is why a sufficient explanation is needed to explain why there's the term R inside there. Geometrically speaking, that is what we have. Find um, change in AK, so AK, the area over here. Geometric argument, apply the formulas of area. What we have is we have this over here. Substitute inside the summation. Take the limit as n tends towards infinity. Get the double integral. And this is what we need to evaluate double integrals in polar coordinates. Okay, always remember, multiply the function by R and then do the integration when you're dealing with polar coordinates. Examples are coming up soon.